Oh man, is it good to see you. I missed you. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of March 17th. Now, through the week, I make videos about hot OTC and penny stocks, and on the weekend, I do the same thing. <laughs> except I do it with a lot more relaxation because first off my scans are locked they're not bouncing around as they do through the week so I really get a chance to do my due diligence at my leisure now I'm only looking at penny stocks now that doesn't mean I'm only looking at stocks on the OTC market I'm only looking at stocks that are under five bucks there's lots of those on the OTC but there's lots of stocks over five bucks on the OTC. Do you know there's actually stocks for $10,000, $20,000 on the OTC market? Sure is. But there are lots of stocks under $5 on the major exchange. So they are everywhere. Now, when I do my research on all these stocks, whether they're on the OTC market, NASDAQ, or New York Stock Exchange, I start my research here at the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site primarily because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. That saves me a lot of time. I do a lot of research and I am not spending my day on Google sorting through old information. All they publicize here is current information. And as a bonus, they bring in a lot of information from the major exchanges. So it isn't going to hurt you at all to start your research here. I guarantee it. So let's take a look at how the OTC market finished on Friday. I'm not going to have to do any refreshing. That is it. We got mixed blessings. Our dollar volume, it's getting closer to 2 billion, which is better than 1 billion, which is where we were a week ago. So that's improving. Our share volume, that's getting worse. We need to stay up near 10 billion. We can barely hold on to 5 billion. So this is hurting us right now hard. Our trades, well, that's a little better. We're up over 250,000. We've been up over 250,000 to 300,000 for six months, but February, something happened. We came under 250 and went down to 200,000 and stayed down that area for about a month. Now we're back up to here. So things are looking better, but not good. All right, I've got some stocks I want to share with you now. Some stocks that I found looking at the charts and then trying to find catalysts after I found the chart setup. Want to see what I got? Of course you do. Why else would you be here on the weekend? First stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is PTRA, Petra, also known as Proterra Inc. Now I found this company by identifying the charts first. Now, I'll be the first to admit this is not an exciting chart. It's not a breakout chart. What it is, is a recovery chart. I think there's an overreaction here, over the top. She's had a lot of bad news since March 3rd. Here on March 3rd, she came out with her financials and they were a little disappointing. I mean, they weren't that bad, but they were a little disappointing, so it dropped. Then they came out with their forecast of their revenues for the next year wasn't what the investors wanted and it dropped some more with disappointment then last week we had the silicon valley banking crisis and she dropped again and hard she started up here at about four dollars and 25 cents and ended up at a dollar seven and right now we're at a dollar 27. i think there's room for recovery here from a dollar 27 somewhere up to four dollars and 20 cents especially right here to about two dollars and 70 cents virtually halfway so i see a lot of potential for recovery so ptra she finished the day at a dollar 27 with about nine percent gains so what is proterra all about electric vehicles commercial electric vehicles really you're talking city buses school buses yellow gear garbage trucks construction equipment stuff like that but they also make the batteries for all of these vehicles as well as the charging units so they do quite a lot proterra is a leader in the design and manufacturing of zero emission electric transit vehicles and ev technology solutions for commercial applications with industry leading durability and energy efficiency based on rigorous u.s independent testing proterra products are proudly designed engineered and manufactured in america with offices in silicon valley south carolina and los angeles so they've got three facilities here in america and they are growing they've just had a little bit of a slow period here so what was the relative volume around the company on friday 
huge increase. Look at that, 400% from 3 million to 13.8 million. Share of structure for PTRA. Oh, something's wrong here. Because this is a stock on the NASDAQ, they have minimum requirements up there for everything. And one of those minimum requirements is how many shares you have on the market. And I do believe that number is 1 million. Well, we are a long ways from 1 million. Normally, they would get a warning from the NASDAQ telling them about this, and they would have to fix that. And the only way to fix it is to put more shares on the market. And I don't even know how many shares they've got. This is a US company. Normally, that would be available to read. I don't know why it's not here. In either case, I can tell you this much, it's probably a very, very small float. Financials for VTRA. Well, you can see the money has been increasing over the last four years, even through COVID, 181, 196, 242, and $309 million. Yeah, that's millions. We've got three zeros here. We got to put behind any of the numbers here. Let's look at the quarterlies for 2022, 58, 78, 96, and oops, we finally had a drop. There was the disappointment. It was a drop of about 15 million, so people were upset about that, and it looks like they're running at a loss right now. Now, I know the company makes buses and all of these big uh, commercial vehicles, but they lost a little bit of money in that arena. However, the battery arena is taking off. They're making lots of money with their batteries right now. Looking at their disclosures. All right, we've got a couple disclosures here. We've got their most recent financial filing that just came out, and we have an 8K. And in this 8K, they told us that on March 12th, Proterra issued a press release titled, Proterra Statement on Minimal Exposure to Silicon Valley. There you go, folks. That's why it fell so hard, because they did have some involvement with this bank, but not a lot. And does it really matter? Everybody was saved, and every penny that everybody had was saved. So no harm was done. So we're back to this no harm, no foul. Shouldn't the price come back? Yeah, at least for the drop on the Silicon Valley. Now, maybe it stays down on the financials, but as I said, I see some room for recovery between $1.27 and $4.25, at least to $2.70, right? All right, what sort of news we got here? Well, the news is good news and bad news. I did not realize this. Petrera's CEO, Gareth Joyce, was appointed by President Biden to the President's Export Council. Personally, their CEO from this company was brought into Biden's council. No political comments here about Biden. I'm just saying it's pretty wild that Garth Joyce was recognized and actually invited by the president himself. So that makes the CEO of this company somebody. Uh, then Proterra statement on minimal exposure to Silicon Valley was on the 13th. Proterra announces date and conference call details for their fourth quarter on the 13th. And then Proterra's stock plunges as revenue forecast lags estimates. As I said, people weren't getting the information they wanted from the financials, which really started it falling. But it's not like they took a huge hit. They just had a decrease. And the company seems to be doing very, very well. And it is green energy here in America, where we, the investors, are trying to put our money rather than in other countries who have green energy. So I think there's a very strong possibility this is going to bounce back. Let's take a closer look at that chart. Back here at the charts for PTRA, and we're going to be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you. So this is a six-month, four-hour chart. We had a high bubble back here in November of 771, and this is a 52-week low we just hit the other day at $1.07. And you can see she's had a tremendous hard fall here. All of our technicals are weak right now. On the four-hour chart, it looks like she is still falling. 20-day, one-hour view. It is a big downhill trend. She hit this low bubble, and now, finally, she has stopped falling, and she is consolidating, going sideways. People are picking up what they want, waiting for these SMAs to get close so that she can move up. Our technicals are getting stronger now on the one-hour. Our PPO is now starting to work her way up, trying to cross that upper line. 
MACD has already had her crossover. She is pushing up. RSI is out of the basement and clear up here at 36. Not a big number, but it's better than being in the blue. Looking at our five-day, five-minute view. So we're looking for a recovery here, and what we need is for these large SMAs to get close to the price, our 200-day and our 50-day, and both of them are right there right now. Now, it doesn't look hot. It doesn't look like she's ready to break out, but you can see the volume was coming into the picture at the end of the day. She has slowed these big rolls down, gotten small, and now she's getting flat. Everything has calmed down, and we have a push-up on our RSI, we have a push-up crossover on our MACD, and we have a push-up on our PPO. Everything looks like it's changing directions right now. So PTRA, this is a good time to watch it if you're looking for a recovery. Our next stock we're looking at is a penny stock on the OTC. This is Predict Medics, ticker PMEDF. Now her chart, it's a heck of a lot better than the last chart we looked at. It's already breaking out. It's over the 200 day SMA and it's climbing at a nice steady incline. She hasn't got any filings to consider, but she's got a lot of news. She's working on deals she's closing. She's launching a new product. She is a startup company as far as I can see. She hasn't got a lot of revenues, but the news is talking about the revenues coming in. So I think this is a perfect time to consider the company. So PM, EDF, she finished the day, <laughs> let's just call this 11 cents, shall we? 0.109328. Hmm, what is with all those extra digits behind the dime? I do not know. She closed out Friday just a little over 6.5% gains. She is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We call this the better tier. It's better because the company has to audit their financials. That's good for me and you, getting actual factual numbers from a CPA. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've also got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, transfer agent verified and a verified profile. Lots of important information is being represented by these green ticks. So if you're getting into an OTC stock for a long hold, make sure you see these. If you're just in it for a quick day trade or swing, don't worry about it too much. So what is Predict Medics about? They tell us here that Predict Medics is an artificial intelligence company developing disruptive and cutting edge tools for impairment testing and healthcare testing. The issuer's proprietary technology uses facial and voice recognition to identify both cannabis and alcohol impairment by utilizing multiple features along with numerous different data points. The issuer is also developing cutting edge screening technologies for the healthcare industry. Now, I really want you to have a clear picture of what this is. So we're gonna dive into a news press, their most recent one that just came out on March 15th. Predict Medics announces production of AI powered mobile application to rapidly detect impairment from both alcohol and cannabis. You get results in less than 30 seconds. I read another news press that says 10 seconds. The mobile application powered by AI algorithms currently is being utilized in safe entry and will be accompanied by a mini multi-spectral imaging camera resulting in portable non-invasive impairment detection solutions. Commercialization will specifically target law enforcement, transport, and other mobile high-risk industries. Now, with regard to that little camera, the multi-spectral imaging camera captures non-visible wavelength data, which the AI algorithms extract features that are associated with impairment from alcohol or cannabis. Now, AI by nature is self-learning, so the company's algorithms will improve as more data is obtained and the processing results will give us greater accuracy and faster results. Although the combination of both the multi-spectral imaging and speech analysis has resulted in an accuracy of over 90% to identify impaired individuals, the speech analysis component of the solution by itself has achieved an impressive accuracy rate in identifying impairment. So it's checking everything. The slurring of your speech, it is actually looking at your pupils. They have a sensor that measures the temperature of your body. And then they've got that little camera there, which is measuring invisible wavelength data. 
I'm not quite sure what that is. Are they measuring vapors off of your body and can tell certain colors for cannabis and alcohol? Don't know, but we're not going to be able to get away with much more anymore. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had a little bit of an increase, about 33%, jumping from 21,000 to 31,000. Still under the radar by all means. Share structure for PMEDF. We got outstanding share count of 134, and I did go verify this, and it is roughly 120 million. Financials for the company are not very impressive. First revenues are accounted for in 2022. They did a total of $106,000. Don't forget those three zeros up there. And they got to keep 66,000. Looking at 2022, it's sad. Falling, falling every quarter, and they didn't have much to start with. 27,000, 16, four, and now we're down to 2,000. So they really do need some revenues coming in, and that's where the news comes in. Disclosures, she hasn't got anything to talk about. We got one 6K here that came out just about a month ago. This is about news presses. So let's just jump over to that news. We've got a few pieces of news here we need to take a look at. This goes back to August of last year. Predict Medics and her partners launched Safe Entry Station as a comprehensive fit for duty screening solution at Electra Mining Africa and National Safety Council's Congress and Expo. They went down there to talk to the mining company. They ended up in this expo and they debuted their technology to a lot of companies down there. Now we haven't had any updates from this, but they are hitting Africa really hard. I do wanna share two pieces of news with you, jump into them quickly. They made a deal here with Long Arm Engineering in November and another deal in March with a defense sector. Now they got a lot of news here about clinical studies, validations. A lot of it is being done in India, but it's all coming up roses. Everything is looking great. And their most recent news press we've already covered. This is them launching their AI mobile app. So taking a look at those two deals that we got, the first deal happened November 17th. Predict Medics deploy safe entries fit for duty screening at Long Arm Engineering. Long Arm Engineering will be implementing safe entry at their Odessa, Texas facility, a full cycle operation, including engineering, electrical, automation, and fabrication. Odessa, Texas is in the heart of the Permian Basin, currently one of the largest and most active oil and gas basin hotspots. Safe entry will be used to screen staff, contractors, clients, and even guests to ensure a healthy and safe workplace. The other piece of news, this one came out March 6th. The company announces a purchase order for safe entries fit for duty screening in the defense sector. DefSpace, a global platform for defense, space, and aerospace, will lease four safe entry stations over four-year term, primarily utilizing safe entries impairment detection screening. Each of the four safe entry stations are to generate $2,500 per month in reoccurring revenue for an initial four-year term. That adds up to approximately a half a million dollars over four years. But this is just one contract for four of them. They're gonna get that reoccurring revenue every single month, just like Netflix does for a subscription. And the more people they get, the more money that's gonna keep coming in. So I think the company's got a hot product here. I think all business owners want to know that their employees are sober and this could take off now there is competition out there but this seems to be ahead of everything else we've been looking at so i think it's definitely worth a watch speaking of watching let's go take a look at that chart actually looks like a pretty predictable chart to me speaking of predictable this is predict medics picker pm edf that's a one year one day chart you got a high bubble back here a year ago of roughly 16 cents and then a thousand percent drop to 1.6 cents. And that is the end of her downtrend off of this 52 week low bubble. She has bounced up over her 200 day SMA and looks like she wants to continue to climb. On the yearly chart, all of our technicals look positive and strong. Coming down to our six month, four hour view. So she hit that low bubble and on this side, look at all that volume, folks. And it's on the green side, not the red side. So it wasn't a sell that brought in all this volume. It was the recovery, all the buying. She pushed to that 50. Look at that huge bar. She meant to be on the 50. 
ran to the 200, huge bar. She jumped up onto that 200. Didn't even come back down to it, did she? Nope. First time she broke through it, she took off and she is now just running uphill, coming down to her 20, looking like that's what she's going to respect. Our volume has been falling all of this time, but it has not slowed the growth on our charts. Technicals look good. We've got that spread right there on our PPO. That is going up. Our ADX is going down. My trend continuation. Whenever you see that bobby pin spread, you know your price is rising. Our MACD is at a crossover and is turning up right now. And our RSI is at 59. Let's look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Nice and easy, ebb and flow. That's what we got going here. Just these nice, easy rolls. She came under her 50 day, a little deep here, hitting that low, came under it just a little bit right here, rolling back uphill. I think when this one comes down, it'll probably be just to it or just above it. That's just a feeling. Our technicals, our oscillators say she is gradually still pushing up and growing. Nothing looks bad here at all. Five day five minute. More ebb and flow. What can I say? We've got a low here of eight cents. 24 hours later, she hits 12 cents. She got a 50% run right there. Then she rolled back, came through her 20 day SMA, but stopped right here at 9.2 cents. Here she was 8.7. So it did not come all the way back down and she's rolling back up. And the price is now sitting on top of her nine day SMA. Oscillators, they are pushing up slowly easily. There's no fervor here. There's no excitement. There's no surge, but there's no bad news. Revenues are starting to come in. Contracts are being made. It's going to get better from this point on as far as I can see. So I would put PMDF on your watch list. You got any reason not to? <laughs> Our last company here is a sub penny stock on the OTC. I know, I know, we don't look at enough of these. I'll see what I can do about that. So this is Ozop Energy Solutions, ticker OZSC. Her chart is looking nice. She's already broke out over the 200, but she's gone nowhere. The 200 has come down nice and flat and she's been consolidating for a couple days looking for a reason to jump and run. Now I'm looking for that reason. So I'm over here and I find a bunch of current filings, but none of them are really gonna get the charts moving. The news though, that's a whole different story. The company's been doing their own thing and on top of that, they just opened up a new division for a new product that is very innovative and very timely. It's needful, we need it right now. So I think this is a good time to consider this company considering they're launching that product right now. OZSC, she finished the day at a great price, just a little bit over a half a penny, 00655 with about 4% gains. She's on the pink tier in current and only got one of those green ticks. We would like to see the other one here, verified profile, if we're going to be getting into this for a long hold. So what is this company all about? Well, we're going to start here and I'll give you some more information from one of their most recent financials. Ozop Energy Solutions invents, designs, develops, manufactures and distributes ultra high power chargers, inverters and power supplies for a wide variety of applications in the defense, heavy industrial, aircraft ground support, maritime and other sectors. Our strategy focuses on capturing a significant share of the rapidly growing renewable energy market as a provider of assets and infrastructure needed to store energy. Jumping over to that most recent financial, we get a little more information here. The company is actively engaged in the renewable electric vehicle, energy storage and energy resilient sectors. We are engaged in multiple business lines that include project development as well as equipment distribution. Our solar and energy storage projects involve large scale battery and solar photovoltaics installations. Now their newest product is talked about right here. They created a new division called Ozop Plus. What Ozop Plus sells is an insurance policy that goes beyond the car manufacturers for your electric vehicle, specifically the battery. Ozop Plus markets vehicle service contracts, also known as VSCs, for electric vehicles that offer consumers to be able to purchase additional months and miles above the manufacturer's warranty. 
Now they made two deals here recently, one in May, one in June. These two companies each offer insurance policies for EVs. Well, this company bought the right to sell those policies and to white label them, meaning that they can sell them to other companies who can sell them for them, almost like a network. So they've got two different types of insurance policies here that they can sell virtually in the entire United States. The very last deal they made here in October, that was last year, of course, was their financial backing. They got American Bankers Insurance Company of Florida to do all of their financial backing. Every insurance company has to have proceeds to back up those contracts they're selling. So they've got everything in place right now and they are just now launching it. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Ooh, a little bit of a drop, but she's not under the radar, is she? We were almost at 8 million shares a day as our average. She dropped to 5.7 million on Friday. Share structure for OZSC. Oh my God. All right, we're not going to bother looking this one up. Not in the pink, not on Google, because I'm not going to find any number that's intriguing. What are they going to tell me? 20 million? I doubt it. No, they've got 15 million restricted. You subtract 15 million from 4.8 billion, <laughs> you end up with 4.8 billion. We've got a ton of shares here. But since we're only playing this for a run, it's really not going to hurt us too much. But it will take some strong volume to get this price moving. Take a look at the financials for the company. What a jump. Whoa. From 157,000 to a half a million, 1.5 million to 12 million. That is a serious increase. Let's see if they're keeping that up in 2022. We've got 3 million, almost 5 million, almost 4. What's that? 9, uh, 12. And what was last year's? About 12. So th this is four quarters at 12 million. Right now they have three quarters and they're at 12 million. So obviously they've exceeded last year and we haven't seen this yet and it should be coming out anytime. Maybe it's out. Let's check their disclosures over here. It would be a 10Q right there. This came out in November for September. So this should be out anytime. And I'm expecting it to be bigger. Not that I'm thinking of that as a catalyst, but any catalyst on this chart would be good. Now, we do have some disclosures over here, 8Ks and stuff, but most of these are about the news. So let's just jump on over to that news. Now, the news picks up right where the financials left off. We were just at the end of 2022 and they were getting this insurance product on the market. Well, they pick up here in January. Ozop Energy Solutions and Serba Solutions create a national EV battery recycling dealership program. Well, that only makes sense. If you're going to be insuring the batteries, sooner or later, you've got to replace them. What are you going to do with your dead one? So it just makes sense to put a deal in place for a battery recycling program already. Then here in March, this was their very first insurance policy. Not a whole bunch of them, just their very first one they sold on March 9th. They sold it for a Tesla 3, I believe it was. But this is what I mean. They are just now getting started. And then these last two here, these are about one more partner they have taken on for financial stability. They've got another financial backer. So everything is looking strong here. They're getting lots of products to sell. They're getting lots of people to back them up. The products are just now coming on the market. And this isn't even taking into consideration everything else that they do. And I'm not going to get into. You can check that out on your own time. The fact is she's got catalyst, she's got innovation, and she's got a chart set up. Matter of fact, let's go take a look at that chart right now. Six month, four hour view for OZSC. Looking at her high bubble back in August, it was about two cents. Her low here is in January of 0042. She bounced off that low hard, up on top of her 200-day SMA, where she has been sitting for a couple months. She did slip here, came underneath it, and tooth and nail, she was hanging on to it. She has now come back up on top of it at 0065, and she is right up underneath that 50-day SMA. And that wick has pierced that 50-day SMA, showing us what she wants to do. Our volume is light. We do need some of that to come into the picture. Our oscillators aren't looking bad at all. You can see we've got a crossover imminent here. Once that blue gets on top of the pink, that's a power move. That is a reversal. 
Our MACD has already had its crossover, but it's about ready to cross the signal line, and you can see the green bars are starting to build up. And our RSI is at 53. Now, what I really like here is my ADX. I got a nice straight line here. If you go straight up, you can see it started when she started going up on her trend. Well, as long as this line continues in that direction, it means my trend is continuing in that direction. So everything looks good on the four hour charts. 20 day, one hour view. Ooh, big drop, huh? Double zero eight two down to double zero five eight. She's worked her way up over that 50 day SMA, has tagged the 200 day once, tagged it twice. Looks like she's coming back down, probably bouncing off of that 50. As that 200 comes lower, the 50 comes a little higher, the price gets trapped in the middle, and then it's got to make a move to get out of there. And I think that's what we're looking at right now. Technicals aren't bad. We've got a spread on our red and blue. Not a big one, but it's there. We have a crossover on our MACD, and our RSI is pulling back. And everything shows a wee bit of pullback right now that we can't see here. But I'll bet you on the five day, five minute, we see some red bars at the end of the day. Yes, sir, right there. Starting at 245, she started the dip from her high here of 007, falling back to that 0065. Not much, she didn't fall far. Looks like she's on that 50 day SMA, could easily come to her 200. But you can see she's respecting that 200 completely. She may come under it a little bit, but then she starts working up. And don't overlook what our 200's doing. It is going up. Our 200 is working up right now. Our technicals on our five minutes are weak. All of this is pulling them down right now. But our 200 is pushing up. We do see our prices staying on top of the 200. They've got a new product. This insurance is just now coming out. I'm expecting every car manufacturer, every car dealer to be offering this. And it's going to be hot. The more electric cars they sell, the more of these they're going to sell. So this may not run next week. But I see this company as growing. OZSC. This would be a long-term watch list. It could run early, but I think this is gonna be a good company to keep your eye on down the road. All right, so let's take a tally on what we looked at today. PTRA, this is your overreaction stock to the Silicon Valley banking. It fell just because they mentioned they had any affiliation with it, as if this catastrophe hurt them. What catastrophe? If it wasn't televised, we'd have never known it had even occurred. Nobody got hurt. So I expect this to come back up and it fell from 270 down to $1.27. So you're looking at over 100% gains just to get back to that point. I'm not even talking about the earlier dip, just that dip itself because of the Silicon Valley. Then we've got our second stock, PMEDF. This is the AI sobriety test not only for alcohol, but for cannabis. Now we've looked at one of these for alcohol, but nobody's got one for cannabis. If this works, this could be an answer to a big problem people have not had any answers to. But not just sobriety, also your wellness. It can tell if you're ill or sick. I don't know if it can identify the diseases, but it knows when you're not well. So you've got that product, which could be very hot across the board with any enterprise in any sector. And the last one we had, that was OZSC. And their product is innovative and needed. The more electric cars that are sold, the more insurance policies that are going to be sold. I just think it's, it's good timing for it. And I haven't seen anybody else doing it yet. I'm sure there are, but they're going to be pushing on this hard. And it's at a really good price right now. So we've got three stocks there that are definitely doing their own thing. They're all unique and different. And they all have charts that are worthy of considering. But of course, do your own DD. The more DD you do, the more you're going to know. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.